Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. I have to go to high tea after this with my girlfriend. It's very much a thing I would not do on my own. So I'm gonna make this video real quick and then I'm gonna run off. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple more scenarios on how to solve electric fields using Gauss's law. And let's say I have two spheres here. The difference between them is one is an insulator sphere. So in other words, it could be a sphere made of plastic or wood or anything that's not metal. And then the second one will just be a conductor. So imagine you have a ball of steel. That's essentially what it is. Now I'm going to say both of these spheres have a charge of positive two Q and that's a net positive charge. So in other words, the total charge is plus two Q for both. I don't care what Q is, Q is just a variable. And I will say that both of these spheres have a radius of lowercase a. And what I would like to do is I would like to find the electric field at two regions for both the insulator and the conductor sphere. The first point I want to look at is somewhere inside of the sphere. And again, that's the same for both. And then for the second case, I want to look at the electric field at a point outside of my sphere. So something like this. Now you're not going to like me for this, but this is good for you. It's like taking your medicine. I want to write our answer all in terms of variables if, let's say, that the radius of the inside is lowercase r and the radius outside the sphere is also r, but it's red this time. And so what I'm saying is we're looking at two different problems. Problem one, when our radius r is less than a, the radius of the sphere, and scenario two, where the radius is greater than a, the radius of the sphere. And again, I'm going to do that for the conducting shell as well. So in other words, I want my answer in terms of the following constants, lowercase r, lowercase a, capital Q, epsilon naught, maybe I'll throw in K, Coulomb's constant in there. I don't know if we'll need it or not, but just these constants is what I want my answer in terms of. So let's start with the first one, which is the insulating sphere. Now I'm just going to redraw it. So it's just the insulating sphere. And I'll also look at just the inside, which I said was lowercase r. Remember that to use Gauss's law, first of all, I'd have to be asking about the electric field. That's the most common time we use Gauss's law when we want the electric field for a 3D object, which this is. And remember what Gauss's law says, flux is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And remember that that flux is just equal to the electric field times the area. There's technically also a cosine theta in there, but I don't have to write the cosine theta because our Gaussian surface is also a sphere. And so whenever you pick the right shape, you can ignore the cosine part. Now I know that's vague in terms of which part is the right part. And I think if you just watch enough of these examples, we've already seen a cylinder so far. Now we see a sphere. That's pretty much it in terms of the shapes you're gonna see. So it's not that bad. And then that's equal to charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So the electric field is what we're solving for. A is surface area of a sphere, which is the surface area of my blue sphere. I know it looks like a circle, but if you imagine it's 3D, it is a sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is something that you're kind of just gonna have to know for this class. It shows up a bunch of times in physics E and M. And the equation for surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. Now I need to be careful here because now there's two radiuses I need to worry about. There's the radius little r of my Gaussian surface, and then there's the radius a of the sphere itself. This area is for the Gaussian surface, so it is lowercase r. So we're good there. Now the only thing left is q enclosed to solve for, and that's honestly going to be the hardest part of this entire problem. And that's because if you think of the charge, this plus 2q, as being evenly distributed throughout this sphere, how can you find the amount of charge just in our sphere right here? And my answer for you is we're going to use proportions. So let me give you an oversimplified example. If I had a pizza and I cut it up into eight slices and I took away half of the pizza and I wanted to know the area of my red shaded region, well, you would say the area of the whole circle is pi r squared and in the numerator, I'm gonna put the amount of pizza I took, which is a semicircle. So one half pi r squared. As you can see, the pi r squared will all cancel. 
and you're just left with one half. Now obviously we could have got one half a lot faster if I just said you ate half of the pizza, but we're going to use the same logic for this sphere inside another sphere because this is not easy to see what it is, like the pizza example. So in the numerator is the area of my blue shaded region, not area, volume, and that volume is going to be the volume of a sphere, which we all know. Actually, that's not true. You probably don't know, so memorize this. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And again, notice the r I'm using. I'm not using a because the volume of my inner sphere is lowercase r. And then I'm going to divide that by the volume of my entire sphere, and that's just 4 thirds pi a cubed. And that's because the radius of the whole thing is a. So once again, I look at what cancels, 4 third cancels, pi cancels, and I'm left with r cubed over a cubed. And that, if I multiply by my charge, which was positive 2q, that is how much charge I have inside. So maybe this is confusing to you, but this is going to be my charge enclosed. Q enclosed equals 2 times q times r cubed over a cubed. Why don't I just fill in the numbers for a and r so you can actually see what this means? Let's say hypothetically that for this sphere, a is 2 and r is just 1. Well, then my charge enclosed would be 2q times 1 cubed divided by 2 cubed, which is 8. And if I plug this in my calculator, I will get a final charge of 1 fourth q. And remember, we're comparing that to the original 2q that's in the entire sphere. So just one more time, in my example I just made up, Inside the blue sphere, one quarter Q. Inside the entire sphere, two Q. And again, I just made up those numbers to give a realistic example. But at the end of the day, this is the charge enclosed that I'm going to be plugging into my formula right there. So that means E times 4 pi R squared is equal to charge enclosed, which is 2 Q R cubed over A cubed, and then divided by epsilon naught. And since that's already in the denominator, I can just put it there. That's nice. And then the last thing I just need to do is divide both sides by 4 pi r squared. So I'll get E, my electric field inside the sphere, is 2q r cubed divided by, now all of this is in the denominator, so it would be a cubed epsilon naught 4 pi r squared. It looks like r squared and r cubed reduce to just an r in my numerator. And that means my electric field is equal to 2q r over a cubed epsilon naught 4 pi. And there's my answer again when r the radius is less than the radius of the whole sphere. And by the way, if you think about this, q is a constant, a is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant, and 4 pi is a constant. The only thing that's a variable here in this equation is r. And when I say it's a variable, it means that you can change it. So looking back at my sphere here, what I'm saying is r is a variable because technically you can look at any radius inside this sphere that you want to. So that's continuously changing. And the more you increase the radius, the more you increase the electric field. And it's actually a linear relationship because r is your only variable. And since everything else is a constant, essentially what you could say is, for the sake of argument, that the graph of the electric field, or here's my radius r, and here's my electric field here, is literally just going to look like a linear line like that. And if you don't understand why, then just memorize it for now, because I see this graph all the time in questions in physics. And then finally, I want to look at a point outside of my sphere. So one more time, here's the sphere, plus 2q, radius a. And now I'm looking at the red region for when my radius r is greater than the radius of my sphere. We actually like this region a lot more because charge and close, we immediately know. All the charge is inside of my red sphere, all 2q. So I'm going to write 2q for charge and closed. The area is still 4 pi r squared, just it's a different r. I mean, it's still the, the symbol r, but now it's outside of the sphere. So then when I set up my equation, e times a, e times 4 pi r squared, is equal to charge enclosed, which is 2q, divided by epsilon naught. Just divide both sides by 4 pi r squared. You'll get the final electric field, 2q, divided by 4 pi r squared, epsilon naught. And that's it. We're done. And again, that's when the radius is greater than the radius of my sphere.
And now one more thing I do want to say if I were to finish out that graph, think about this. Again, 2, q, 4, pi, and epsilon naught are all constants. Essentially what you've only got to worry about is the r squared in the denominator. So in other words, that portion of the graph will literally look like the graph y equals 1 over x squared. And if you don't know what that graph looks like, I'll just tell you. It's going to look something like this. And since the points have to meet up right there, it has to be continuous. And what's that point right there? That's A. That is the radius of my sphere. This is what the electric field will look like. So notice inside the sphere, it increases linearly. And then once you get greater than A outside the sphere, the electric field decreases in this curvy shape. So in other words, the maximum electric field is at the outside of my sphere. And so again, that's it for the insulating sphere. And if you want my advice, I would take away from this, I would memorize the surface area of a sphere, the volume of a sphere, Gauss's law, and probably this graph as well for this specific situation. This is one of the most common situations in physics E and M when you have an insulating or conducting sphere like this. What I would not recommend you memorize, I would not memorize this equation because that's brutal. I would not memorize this equation either because it's just too much to memorize. But if you can memorize surface area of a sphere, volume of a sphere, Gauss's law, and this graph shape, that's at least reasonable. I did it at one point. And I didn't even have someone telling me to memorize it. I'm telling you, these are the things that are important to memorize. So now let's move on to the conducting sphere. I think you're going to like the conducting sphere a little bit more. So again, still radius A, still charge positive 2Q. And first, let's look at a point again inside of my sphere. So the radius R is less than A. So this one is super easy. The electric field is just zero, and that's because it's a conductor. So the electric field is immediately zero because you're inside a conductor. Let me add that word. You're inside a conductor. Outside the conductor, the electric field will not be zero, but inside it will be zero. And in case you're wondering why that is, the only way that makes sense is if the charge inside here is zero. And that's actually true because for the conducting sphere, even though this sphere is all made of metal, like it's not hollow, it's filled to the brim with metal, but all the charge is located along the outside of the sphere. And that's how you can have an electric field zero anywhere inside the sphere. So when you're inside the sphere, electric field zero, easy. And then if we want to look at a point outside the sphere where R is greater than A, it's pretty much going to be the exact same thing we had for the insulating sphere. Because charge enclosed, now you've enclosed all the charge, so plus 2Q. The area is still the surface area of my sphere, 4 pi lowercase r squared. And so we'd write E times 4 pi r squared is equal to charge enclosed 2Q divided by epsilon naught. You'll get the exact same answer. E equals 2Q divided by 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. And we're done. And the only other thing I want to say for this problem is what would this graph look like for the conducting sphere? Well, like we said, when you're less than A, when you're less than the radius of the sphere, your electric field is just zero. And then at point A, it will look exactly like the insulating sphere. And I connect the lines just like this. And so there we go. The left graph is the insulating sphere and the right graph is the conducting sphere. And again, I would memorize both of those. So hopefully you didn't find that too bad. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I have to go to high tea. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.